rejoins me now. So, Janet, I've got you back on the show because uh, cards on the table. I have spent an infuriating 24 hours, and I want you to explain why I've had to go through this, because let me start from this premise. I have always been 100% supportive of all gay rights, gay marriage rights, transgender rights. In fact, I want equality for everyone in America and around the world. That's always been my position. Anyone who's watched this show knows that's exactly what I've always stood for. I had you on the show. I, I, you had read a powerful book. I did nothing but laud your courage. I said you were a fantastic person to be out there, centre stage, selling the message that there's no need to stigmatise tr uh, transgender people. Uh, I called you a woman throughout the interview. I never disputed the fact that you're a woman. And yet today I have spent literally 12 hours being viciously abused by the transgender community, egged on by your own tweeting last night that you were somehow very dismayed by the way the interview had gone. Now, I was surprised because you never said anything during the interview to indicate you were remotely dismayed with any of the terminology I was using. At the end of the interview, you were very cordial. We shook hands. You thanked me for the interview. And off you went. And the interview was done five days ago. So I ask you, Janet Mock, to explain to me why you didn't say anything during the interview, why you seemed quite happy with it afterwards, why you then felt the need to tweet quite hostile tweets in my direction, which then sparked this furore amongst the transgender community, because I feel pretty peeved about it. Well, I'm sorry that you feel offended. I think that people in the trans community feel equally as offended. I think that one of the number one things with trans women specifically is that so much of our lives are open to dissection and illegitimacy and um, investigation. And we're constantly questioned ever since we're very young that who we are is incorrect, wrong, and should be kept secret. And I think that being someone that is very visible in a stigmatized community. You know, I am a trans woman of color. I'm a young woman. And these are issues that I think that we need to give trans people space to tell their own stories. And we should follow the lead of people who um, are out there and being visible and actually advocating for these rights. But that's what, exactly why I had you on the show. That's why I promoted your book. That's why I told everybody to go and read the damn thing. So I ask you again, why have I been vilified for being transparently supportive of you? I don't get it. Maybe you don't get it because you're not a trans woman. Trans women well, explain are... explain to me. Explain to me what I did wrong. <laughs> what did I do wrong? You called... Oh, so before commercial break, we had a lovely conversation, and then all of a sudden you said, who was formerly a man. I was a baby. I was assigned male gender because of the appearance of my genitals. As I grew up, I discovered my girlhood, I discovered my womanhood, and I proclaimed and defined myself for myself, as Audre Lorde says. If we do not define Why ourselves... Why didn't you correct me at the time? For, Why didn't you correct me? I did not because I was if scared. If you felt that strongly. I did not because scared I was of what? scared. And I wanted to be scared a cordial guest. And I think that that was probably incorrect of me. I wanted to be kind, I wanted to be generous because I was appreciative of having two segments on a mainstream show. It was my first major appearance as a young trans woman. Who wrote her first And I thought book. you were terrific, by the way. For, for and what I, it's I worth, thought it was a terrific I you were terrific. too. I think that by the way, I love by that the way, you Janet, me that I looked like Beyonce, that you said all right, these amazing I, things, and that I, was great. Honestly, but I think that also being, um, being offensive and being kind are not mutually exclusive things. I think that we can be completely have great intentions and be good people, but also be ignorant and have a lack of understanding about these issues. And a lot of these things, especially for trans women, are about understanding. Right, okay, let, let me, it's about right, understanding. Right, right, and Janet, intention is, let me cut, is great, but we also need action. Okay. Let me cut to the quick about why perhaps confusion has arisen, not just in my mind, but in many people's minds. You are famous in America now predominantly from a piece you wrote for Marie Claire magazine in 2011. I actually did not write that piece. Of... I didn't well, write that piece. Well, it's in your words. It, it's a first-person piece by you. I didn't choose right? the title, just like that. I did not choose a title on the title cards that were underneath my name in the segment or the tweets that went up okay. from the show. OK, I don't want this to be, I don't want this to be a hostile encounter. I, don't I really either. don't, because I still mm -hmm. actually greatly admire you, and I just want to make that clear. I appreciate However, that. This is the piece that I've got in front of me. It was the piece that made you famous. Mm -hmm. The headline is, I was born a boy, mm -hmm. right? Now, maybe you didn't write the headline, so I read the piece, OK? You talk about going through gender reassignment surgery, a sex change. Though I have been a born a boy to my native Hawaiian mother, that's the first page, uh, the next day, there were only dolls OK for me, a boy, to play with. 
And then another reference here on the last page, something about my passing to share with you. This is in the conversation with Aaron, who's your boyfriend. I calmly said, I was born a boy. So I can kind of give you that you weren't writing the headlines, but do you really expect me to believe in a piece you, you have personally signed off on that made you famous, in which you repeatedly call yourself a boy? I actually did not write moment... that piece, Piers. I also wrote a follow-up piece, an essay critiquing that, just like I critiqued this episode. I read episode. that. I read that. And I read so that, but... in the book, I also, okay. in my introduction of my book, I talk about how that piece was so problematic. And it's problematic because we don't let trans women say who they are. We need to just follow trans women and let them say who they are and believe them when they say that. That's what this is about. About. This is not about Twitter. That's why I was not engaging today. I was not engaging in the debate. I continued to move forward yeah. and try to continue to make okay. this a positive experience. And I want this to be a learning right. experience. I Explain want allies. I, I want, want allies like too. you and supporters I like you to, to continue too. to support okay. us and to continue to give right. us space on your show. I don't want other people to be afraid. And these are touchy issues. And they've been around since the Janet, 1950s. Let me say something. I do support you. I couldn't have made that any more crystal clear yesterday. I continue to support you. I have always been supportive of all gay rights, gay marriage rights, gay equality, rights are not trans transgender rights. rights. Gay I rights are not transgender tra rights. I just it's came true. to trans. I was about to say transgender. I was halfway through but the word. It has word. nothing to do with gay Don't rights. Don't interrupt me. Gay rights and trans I'm rights are not about the same things. I didn't say they were. <laughs> I didn't say they were. I'm simply saying I believe in equality for all. Whether you're gay, transgender, whatever, I don't care. Right? I've always been completely supportive. I think and when that's I read great. a piece, when I read a piece in Marie Claire, a prestigious magazine, you spend a lot of time posing for pictures with them, with the journalist, a lot of time in her presence. She also appears, after all this time she spent with you, this journalist, to be labouring under the massive misapprehension that you have repeatedly referred to yourself as having been a boy who then went through gender reassignment surgery and became a woman. Now. That is perhaps where the confusion lay, because that's the original piece that sparked all the attention about that it. That so, piece so should not this. have been the basis of our interview, though, Piers. I wrote the record of my life. I wrote it. It took me three years to write that. It took me years to be the first person in my family to go to college, to be able to have access to those resources and to write this book and to live my life. And my entire life, I've been told that who I am is wrong and should be kept silent. And so for me, that Marie Claire piece is not the basis of my life. My life is in Redefining Realness, this book that is a gift, not for me. It's a gift to young girls like me growing up so that they know it. that who they are is real and legitimate and that they're valuable and worthy Janet, of protection I don't and dispute care. But Janet, we have, a, we have a moment there of absolute agreement. I don't dispute anything that you've just said. I simply ask that if I'm being vilified for repeating something that has, from the very start of your media uh, profile, if you like, has been Which I critiqued accepted, in the opening of my I, book. I, I, you've made <laughs> that very clear. Ten pages in, I critiqued that piece. Here is, here is my point. Why is it... Explain to me. Let me learn mm -hmm. something here. Explain to me why it is so offensive for somebody like you who grew up a boy until you were into your teenage years and, and your family treated you as a boy and you were biologically a boy, that you then have gender reassignment uh, surgery and you become a woman and you've always felt that you're a woman. As I said right off the top last night, you have always felt inside you that you're a female and I did not dispute that at all and I don't dispute it to you now and I have absolute respect for you believing that has always been your gender but I also believe that the, the phrase gender reassignment means that you had a sex change operation it means that you go from male to female or female to male that is the legal definition of gender reassignment so I, need I think to that learn. gender is a lot more complex well, let me ask you the question a lot let me ask you the question than that. let me ask you the question the question is here's where I want to learn because I don't want this to be mm -hmm. an ongoing issue that I have with, with the community of which you are such a great spokesman and advocate. I want to learn why it is so offensive to actually just say that you grew up as a boy and you then, because you've always felt that you were female, you had surgery to become a woman, to become a real woman, as you say in the book. Why is it offensive? I think that we need to have a discussion about what gender is and gender expectations in our culture. I think that we are born and we're assigned a sex at birth. That is a matter none of us have control over. But we do have control over our destinies and over our identities. And we should be respected 
It's not about the past. It's not about what surgeries I may or may not have had. It's not about how I disclose my gender to people. It's about who I am right now. I'm Janet Mock. I'm author of Redefining Realness, and I'm a fierce trans advocate, and I will continue to be exactly that. That's what I was on this show to do. If I spoke out every single time that someone said, called me out of my name or labeled me as something that I'm not, I would not have time to advocate for the fierce and urgent issues in my community, issues of poverty and joblessness, of a lack of health care, of violence, verbal and physical violence against trans women. How does it help you, Janet, that somebody like me, who has been such an open supporter of the community that you represent so well and so publicly, that you target me for what you knew would be a load of abuse that then followed. You did. The tweets last night ignited a firestorm of abuse and vilification my way because you said I had sensationalised your story. Uh, I was not formerly a man. I wasn't formerly a boy. It was another tweet you said. Uh, all this kind of I rhetoric sent three that you tweets. produced. And, and yet, and yet, yeah, but Janet, they were important <laughs> tweets to me and important tweets to... And I did to not tweet them at you. I tweet I believe... them at the framework of your show and how they were packaging this right. story that we did. Our exchange was completely fine, but when you package something with the headline, until 18 was a boy, and also say formerly a man, when in talking about my beloved, the love of my life, and our interaction together, that is false advertising, and that is infotainment, because I understand as someone who worked in media, who the, worked, who worked but, but, at People but, but Magazine, but Janet, who worked as an editor, Janet, I understand not, that sensationalizing our stories entices people to look in. But I hope that the no, best Janet, thing that we Janet, can get out of it is to be a learning and teaching moment for all of us. Janet, with the greatest of respect, and I mean with the greatest of respect, you've written a book, Redefining Realness, My Path to Womanhood. My Path to Womanhood, Identity, Love and so much more, right? I've got here, as I say, the Marie Claire article that started your whole media profile. I was born a boy, repeatedly, in your words, saying I, did not write I was that born a boy. Piece. It's not my right. words. So let words me ask are you a precious. Let me ask me. you. I'm a writer. Let me ask you a simple words question. Words are precious, and I, I really believe that we need question. to give people. I would like to ask you a question. Okay, can will, I ask mine first, we... then you can ask yours? <laughs> okay. Okay. My question is simply this: Do you do you dispute that you were born a boy? Do I dispute that I was born a boy? I was born a baby, who was assigned male at birth. I did not identify or live my life as a boy. As soon okay. as I had enough agency in my life to grow up, I became who I am. And this did not start at 18 when I went to Thailand to have surgery. It started when I was six years old and my parents saw me for who I was and allowed me to live my life. That's a lot of nuance okay. and it's hard to communicate that in 30 seconds or even in a 140 character tweet. That's why I'm here right now. I want this to be a learning and teaching moment for all of us because there's a lot of misunderstanding. Just as much as you were vilified, or as you say from my, from my supporters, that's actually my community who are vilified every single day and misunderstood and drove into isolation and told that what, who they are is incorrect and wrong and should be under investigation. And my question Janet, to you is, Janet, will you please Janet. use your platform to continue to tell our stories and to let us... Yeah. Yes. Well, yes, there you go. as I always That's, have done. Yes, me, and I would love me, to have coffee me, with you and sit down and have a real conversation would, off I'm air sure we, and really I'm sure we will do that. and have transcendence and, be and happy understand to do that. one another. Right, but let me jump in. <laughs> I have never said that you were wrong or that anyone who's been through a transgender process is wrong or was somehow in the wrong place or wrong body order. I've never used that kind of terminology. I would see that as being obviously offensive. I don't see that as being wrong, that you were born a boy and, and felt you were a woman and are now a woman. I don't feel that anything of that is wrong. And I don't think the terminology is offensive. And I think my complaint about what you did with those tweets is that, A, you never raised any of this as an issue during the interview where I repeatedly referred to you as having been male before. You never picked me up on it or showed any sign of irritation. And I think that I just felt that you threw me to the wolves of it. And by the way, I don't mind. I'm a big boy. I can take it. I can take being vilified by anybody. I don't mind being vilified. I get it every day from people who support the lack of gun control in America, right? However, however, I do think it was a little unfair that you sparked off this firestorm of abuse to me when I am a supporter of your community and always have been. And I think it doesn't do you or your community any good service to try and make people like me the enemy and the target of abuse. And you've read the tweets, you know what I'm talking about, when actually I'm on I your side. I actually couldn't read the tweets. I could not read any of the tweets. My life today and the lives of trans people continue to have been more and more miseducated and misinformed within these tweets. 
Um, and I think it's bigger than Twitter, and I think it's bigger than this book. This is a conversation I think our country is going through, well, my country, is going through a lot in terms of our culture on trans issues. And how then do we report on these lives without sensationalizing, without enticing, without warping and throwing definitions and labels on people who have the capacity and the, the know-how and the experience to claim their lives. And I think our exchange was good. You know, you compare me to Beyonce and I live for her. But it was also bad in the sense that it further showed other people in my community that if Janet Mock can be misgendered, if she can be labeled something that she is not, then how, what does that mean for me? And I, I'm only out here doing this work for these girls that grew up like I did. I wanted to give them a story that reflects them, a story that okay. is sensitive and full of nuance and love. Okay, Janet? I get it. My advice to you in return would be I next don't time need you do advice. I don't need advice, but You've I will just given take me guidance. advice. You've just given me advice I perhaps also don't feel I need, but I've taken it in good grace. So let me give you some advice. Next time you're doing a big high profile television interviewer and you feel that the interviewer is miscategorizing your identity or your gender, my advice, and I say this in a nice, uh, friendly, respectful way, is say something. Don't pretend it's all gone very well and shake that into his hand afterwards and thank him, and then go off five days later and ignite a social media firestorm of abuse in his direction, because that isn't fair either. So I don't try and equate my struggle in life with yours. I've had it pretty easy by comparison. Your book remains a great, inspiring book. I remain a great supporter of the transgender community. I hope we can both move on from this, and I appreciate you coming back on the show tonight. Thank you.